What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the newest episode of the Las Vegas Raiders franchise here in Madden 20. We're coming off a week two disappointing loss to the Washington Redskins 17 to 10. A game that we had just a lot of nonsense, man. We had a touchdown called back because it wasn't a fumble. We had just ridiculous animations throughout the game. Uh, the first time we've really ever felt that. We had just a, the stupidest drop pass from Hunter Renfro that defied the laws of gravity, you know? And, um, you know, we're going to take that loss on the chin. We're 1-1. One and one. We got two big games here, winnable games. Week 3, hosting the Denver Broncos, a team that we have had a lot of success against. And then week 4, on the road against Cincinnati. So, like, we, you know, we're top of the AFC West. No team has started to pull ahead. No team has gone undefeated as of yet. So, uh, so positive results here in today's episode would have us remain top of the division, which I think is going to be key. Uh, right off the rip, we have two players ready to negotiate. They are two very good players. So sooner than later, you want to give them new contracts. So we're looking at Mo Hurst here. He only wants a two-year deal. Uh, I mean, that takes till he's 28. Let's give him a three-year deal. That's 29. Uh, I wouldn't have to worry about any regressing or anything like that. So we got a brand new deal for Mo Hurst. He's only going to get better. And honestly, like I said, I, I only really have experience playing with Fletcher Cox in terms of dominant defensive tackles. And he's, he's starting to get up into that territory. Uh, we have Mr. Antonio Brown. Uh, he wants three years. I mean, you know, it's it's not a rebuild. AB at whatever he's going to regress to in three years, he'll probably what, still be at 86, 85. That's still going to be really, really good for our Raiders team. So uh, we definitely want to give Mr. Big Chest a new contract if he will stay with us. And that is a perfect offer. I'm telling you, man, he is turning a corner. He has, he, I don't know, maybe apparently has stopped hanging out with OJ Simpson, which is benefit, beneficial not only for off the field, but beneficial for his health. You know, we'll be able to get him for the next three years, you know, so in case something uh, mischievous happens. But, um, man, I feel like he turned a new leaf. I feel like at 33... He's starting to realize, man, I need to put together. I, I, he, maybe his personal success has been fine, making all those records, making all that money. But maybe now he realizes that he really can be the defining factor that could take this Raiders team and put us in a scenario and situation to win a Super Bowl. Um, of course, we just brought in Mike Gusecki, and he is up for contract negotiation as part of a, kind of a whoopsie-daisy trade. So we're not going to trade for a guy unless we let him walk. Three-year deal, very affordable. And I'm actually kind of pumped to use some two tight end sets now because before we had Nick O'Leary, not going to lie, pretty much garbage. Jacob Breeland, uh, second, uh, what's he, second-year man out of Oregon. He's just more so a developmental guy. But look at the rest of our contracts here for the upcoming season. We definitely want to extend Chris Warren. Had that huge touchdown week one. He fills that Mike Allstott role for John Gruden's offense. Uh, Vernon Hargraves has actually been fairly solid. A uh, three-year deal if that's around the territory. Hey, no, we'll probably take a look at that. Colton Miller has been garbage. Like, literally one of the worst tackles. But in terms of Madden, I don't know. We got to think about it. Uh, Carlson, I love him as a kicker. Got 95 kickback and get all the job done. We definitely want to bring him back. Ratley, the preseason all-star. We might have to look at it. Melifon, who's been solid. Uh, Tyree Jackson, maybe as our backup. Think about that long-term, but... We got some decisions to make for free agency, but the fact that we got our two big dogs locked up year, what are we, week three? That's insane moves. We also have our draft class uh, imported on this week, and we got to start previewing what we're looking at here, what we're looking for. Uh, I mean, when you look at the QBs, you get Spencer Rattler for Oklahoma. Bo Nix coming off a huge IRL win, Auburn versus Oregon. He's sitting here as a first round grade, but we actually, we don't, we don't need a quarterback as of now. Uh, come on. We don't need a quarterback for, for a long time uh, running backs we're good at running back too we uh, we've been investing fairly heavily in that position when it comes to our receivers we're also good here you know Jaden Hazelwood's a real good player out of Oklahoma Anthony Swartz might be the fastest player since like Tyreek Hill to come out of college um, but again you look at wide outs we're I mean we're heavy we're heavy at wide I like the only thing I think we really need to get better as as a team here is the offensive line so I'm gonna be looking heavy at Evan Neal at left tackle like you know, we need to make that decision. Is Colton Miller going to get a brand new contract or not? So uh, we'll go down here. We'll get to the second round. Some of these guys, Max Ray, Derisaw, our scheme fits beyond that. I mean, there's a couple guys here we will continue. We pretty much got to scout all the tackles. But let's more so look at the first round talents. At guard in the inside, we have John Runyon and we have Gabe Jackson. Now, Gabe Jackson's getting up there in age a little bit. So let's do our due diligence here 
and we'll scout out the guards. Cole Snyder, UCF. Uh, he could be a nice little player. We're okay at center. You got Alec Lindstrom, brother of Chris Lindstrom, first round pick of the Atlanta Falcons in 2019. Um, we could always add more depth behind Rodney Hudson because it's only a matter of time until he hits that wall and starts to regress. But uh, I don't think this is the year. We'll schedule some of these guards. A couple first round talent guards um, with good size, especially Devontae Dodds from Michigan State, 6'5, 310. That to me, at least in Madden terms, says flexibility. Uh, right tackle. I mean, pretty much the tackles are universal. So Cosme from Texas is talented. Logan Brown, Wisconsin. Kenyon Green from AM. Wanya Morris from Tennessee. I don't understand. Tennessee is so bad. How do they keep getting really good prospects? It makes no sense. But you go to the defensive side, and this is where you get to some of the big names. Kayvon Thibodeau, Alfano from Alabama, Zach Harrison from Ohio State. We saw how OP Zach Harrison was in the realistic rebuild of the Colts. Uh, so any one of those three guys are absolute game changers. Justin Foster from Clemson is solid as well. Inside, Zach Pickens. You got Leal Softshire, who we actually also used in the Colts rebuild. He got up into the 90s. Ali McNeil from NC State. Uh, he's a beast. Linebacking core. Real good year to need a linebacker. Nolan Smith, Marcel Brooks. You got Brandon Smith, Nicobe Dean, Quaveris Crouch, for converted running back. So this guy is one of the biggest hitters. He had unbelievable explosiveness. Uh, Funa from Oregon to Gabriel Floyd, Keho and Lee, Xavier and Collins. Really, there's, there is a lot of depth of middle linebacker. And uh, I mean, Owen Popo, speed rusher from Auburn. Maybe this is the year we start looking at at least adding some diversity to our linebacker core right now. If you haven't noticed, most of our linebackers are converted safeties. Maybe we start getting some guys that are... You know, good against the run as well, like complete linebackers. Linebackers that are more prototypical, that are like that safety hybrid, but they're actually not a liability against the run. We look at the secondary, there's some good corners too. It's a good year to need a corner. Stingley, Dent, Chris Steele uh, are, are the creme de la creme. All those guys are probably going to be like franchise corners. Dax Hill might be the most talented, pure talented player in the draft. Free safety from Michigan. Uh, J.R. Pace, Antoine Winfield Jr., his dad was a beast for the Vikings. Crosswell is also very talented from Arizona State. Uh, do we need a free safety, though? I don't think we do. No, we're Gucci. Then strong safety, DeMarvion Overshone. Awesome name, plus he's huge, 6'4", 205. Uh, you get uh, DeMarco Hellams, strong safety from Alabama. Anytime you see a safety from Alabama, there's a pretty good chance that they're good. Uh, and those are the special teams. Lewis Headley, the jacked, tatted-up punter from Miami, is in our class. I had to think about it. I don't know. Townsend's been pretty good to us. So there is your draft class. I don't know if there's any names that you saw that you guys are personally like a big fan of that you really want me to, to try to target as long as they're not, you know, pretty much quarterbacks. The only position I wouldn't really go after uh, unless like a lot of them, you know, there's no chance. But if momentum got behind the say a wide receiver or something like that that you guys really want to see, I might, I might have to be a man of the people, but let me know in the comments. So we welcome the Denver Broncos, two familiar faces as their X-Factors in Von Miller and Chris Harris Jr. They got Bryce Callahan, and they also have two talented playmakers. How do they get both these guys? Chase Young out of Ohio State, Travis Etienne, the running back out of Clemson. Okay, they got some, they got some dangerous players here. Even though they're getting out there in age a little bit, doesn't matter though. Etienne, Etienne and Trevor Lawrence are gonna be buddy-buddy on the sideline. They're not going to be at the end of the game when Trevor Lawrence throws another four touchdowns on the ass. And we go to 2-1, and one, top of the AFC West. Oh, you make that throw. You make that throw, ABPA Crossers. What is this, Madden 19? That is our first deep connection, 49-yard touchdown between Trevor Lawrence and Antonio Brown of the season. Hopefully the first of many, but the kid is slinging it in front of the home crowd here in the desert. Oh, you're going to have to go ahead, get bear, just, just bear hunt, manhandle, Mo Hurst, let's go, got a new, he got that new money, he smells like money. Oh, there you go, pulled his ass, what time's this guy going to pull his ass, with a hip pointer, the hell's that, oh, okay, third night, yeah, just, it's a lethal combination. Oh, Damian Ratley! Preseason All-Star third and a mile, making the most of his opportunities, keeps this drive going for the Raiders. First goal on the six. Again, this is where I definitely need to replace Derek Carr's production. Derek Carr was phenomenal in the red zone. Oh, oh, and it keeps it going. It's almost like AB was what made it really good in the red zone. Not Derek Carr. Second touchdown of the game, Antonio Brown. 
Well, third and 46. That's a that's a great down to be in. Third and 46. Third and goal on the 15. Or third and goal on the six. They're going to play. If we tackle them inbounds, they're not going to get any points. Ah, let's go defense. Get mauled. Get mauled. Are we going shopping? His Teddy Bridgewater's getting mauled. All right, a big stand here for our defense. Fourth and 18 to get a shutout. I don't think we've ever got a shutout in this whole series. And look at that. He just chucks it into row A. Teddy Bridgewater. Pretty effective. I mean, 21 to 29, but the yards weren't there. We limited the big plays. We should get out of this one. Our first home game of year three. And that was a clean performance, a clean win. Wasn't anything flashy. I mean, AB showed some flashes. The chemistry between our star wide receiver and machine at quarterback is very promising going forward. Um, obviously, coming up from this game, we want to know the injury status of Josh Jacobs as he looked like he was breaking up this season. And our run game definitely did suffer with him out of the lineup. Uh, but for the day, Trevor Lawrence, very efficient. Again. You could argue taking the safe throws, but you know he's not turning the ball over. 200 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Still yet to throw a pick or have any turnovers in his career. We got 41 yards from Eno Benjamin, 11 yards Jacobs, 41 for Richard, 13 for Chris Warren. On the receiving standpoint, um, actually, my controller just died. Come on, let me see the receiving. Very quick. We got 93 yards, two touchdowns for Antonio Brown. On the defensive side of things, we had a couple sacks. Come on, survive. Eight tackles, Gary on Conley. We got two sacks, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Two sacks, Mo Hurst. A sack from Hassan Reddick. Clean performance as this win definitely puts the Raiders at least tied for first in the division. Next up, we got the Bengals. Now, this one here is kind of a shout out to anyone that has watched any pink slips over the years on the channel as you can see we have 52 of 53 players on the roster i was like man let's just take a peek here at free agents see if we can fill that last spot up oh oh right 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 on right on now not only signing john ross is just you know if we have to at the offense uh we have the fastest guy in the nfl but he could also give us some insider tips here as we get ready to take on the bengals for the second game of our doubleheader we got geno atkins and aj green as their x factor super uh, superstar is tyler boyd i mean i'm not overly let's be completely honest i'm not overly worried about the cincinnati bengals we know they still have andy dalton at quarterback because they wanted to trade for kirk cousins so uh definitely think this is a very winnable game for us to finish the episode at three and one well, I'm sure, as all of you heard, we're getting ready to, to go to Cincinnati, Ohio, to Paul Brown Stadium. And then I guess there was a you know fine thrown out from GM Mike Mayock to Antonio Brown. Some stuff happened on social media. And basically, if we want to maintain any sort of organizational culture, structure, and you know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to suspend Antonio Brown. For a game, it's almost like, you know, bringing in John Ross foreshadowed everything. So, A.B. is going to have to, unfortunately, not make the trip to Cincinnati. Um, I, I think, I don't even know what the suspension was about. Like, I'm just focusing on winning. I'm I, Maybe I'm so blinded by trying to get everything done with Trevor Lawrence, make sure he's successful, that I didn't even know there was some sort of rift going on between my general manager... And my star playmaker who just had his best game of the season. So, I mean, everyone else was almost unanimous decision. I personally would have just rocked and rolled with AB. Get him to pay the fine. Maybe double the fine. Don't make him miss games. Because there's one thing you know AB doesn't want to do. And that is negatively affect AB. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't, I, you know, I feel like he did turn a little bit of a leaf here. And is a little bit more team oriented. But I think AB being suspended. If, if we had to send a message, and it's not for me. I don't think this is going to be a conflict between me and Antonio Brown, but AB not being able to get touchdowns, not being able to get more yards. Um, I mean, he's he's trying to be the you know he's trying to make it three straight seasons of being the best wide receiver in the National Football League and missing any game time that's not due to injury is surely going to piss him off. 
But, uh, yeah, all right, we're going C.D. Lamb, Renfro, Ratley's going to get some more snaps, and John Ross off the bench going up against his former team. Does he even need to know the playbook? Does it matter? We're just going to have him run streaks anyways. Good news is Josh Jacobs was only missing the remainder of the game. He is back in the lineup, and you know that he is going to be gunning for pretty much he's headhunting. He's, he likes to run and look for contact. And he wants, you know, the, the rumor, the reputation that he's soft. He's going to be jacking dudes up all over the field today. Oh! <laughs> Third and one. Sean Williams trying to make the tackle. And good night. Put that guy in concussion protocol. Oh, second and five. And John Ross gets wide open against his former team. You probably could guess you see that defense a time or two again. Awesome, man. If this, if AB suspension could just end up being the rejuvenation of John Ross's career so we can add another talented wide receiver to this room, that's actually going to be a big win. Big dub for the Raiders franchise. Uh, Joe Mix, that was a well blocked play from the Bengals. Joe Mixon gets in, gets a touchdown. They dink and dunk there fairly, fairly dink and dunky. You know, I was, I was expecting more big explosive plays, but they finished the drive off. They're, you know, they're sticking around. Okay, Josh Jacobs might be the worst C4 special running back of all time, but we had a, a, a goal this week to go for 150 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. So, look, they, they knew that we failed it like 10 times since Josh Jacobs has been in the league, but there it works. Gets a nice little touchdown. His first rushing touchdown of the year opens up his account here against the Bengals. Here we go. Nice Abram. He's been quiet to start this year, but gets a nice little sack there. As the Bengals are pushing, it'd be nice to hold them here to a field goal attempt at worst. Oh, screen pass. Jalen Rashad takes him by surprise. And, uh, oh my god, man. Can we not throw a pick with, with, with Trevor Lawrence? Is it impossible? Does this guy only complete passes? That was actually a great play call there from John Gruden and company. They were not expecting the screen. A play that we might have run twice and the entirety of the series. That's probably why they're doing their homework. But uh, there we go, man. Jalen Mashard showing he's still low-key, one of the most underrated receiving backs in the National Football League. Oh, Mo Hurst gets another sack. Lays out Andy Dalton. Holding play on the Bengals. Decline. Let's get the ball back and pull even further ahead. Man, he's good. A.J. Green, I mean, they took a lot of time on that drive. But they're, they're only a touchdown away. we got to make sure we can secure this onside. All right, this is for game third and one. Josh Jacobs has fought for every yard he's got here today. It has not been easy trucking. And there we go. Secures the first down and a three and one record for the Raiders. Barring... A horrific accident or mistake. And 27-20 is the final score on the day. I don't think we reached our goal for the rushing yards, even though I think we've never ran the ball more than we did in this game. 32 attempts for Josh Jacobs. But uh, it's a victory. It's a victory on the road. Uh, you know, it's, it's tough, man, when three of your first four games with a brand-new rookie quarterback are on the road. So it would be 3-1, and one, and we already know the circumstances of that one loss against the Redskins. It was just beyond ridiculous. Uh, we, we played very well, and we shut down A.J. Green when we were missing our star wide receiver. Now, it can't be, it's, it, or it can't, and it's not going to be one of those scenarios where we're like, well, look, we won without A.B. Do we really need A.B.? Absolutely. Um, you know, it wasn't like anyone else had a real standout performance, but Trevor Lawrence, unbelievable efficiency. Almost a perfect QBR yet again. 260 yards passing, two touchdowns, no interceptions. We got 32 rushing attempts. 98 yards and a touchdown for Josh Jacobs. He fought for every single yard that he got. Only two broken tackles, 3.0 yards per carry. Receiving John Ross coming off the street. Maybe, you know, extra motivated. Going up against his former team. Five catches, 82 yards and a touchdown. We got 74 yards for CeeDee Lamb. Jalen Richard had that screen pass that they took to the house. But, I mean, impressive performances from CeeDee Lamb and John Ross. And I think we might have... I mean, pretty much the only guy that would be upset right now is Damian Ratley because he's you know, seemingly won game. Um, everything that he achieved and, and maybe roster spots and how, how he feels about his spot on the depth chart that he thought he gained during a dominant preseason 
Signing John Ross off the street and giving John Ross this opportunity. Got to feel kind of disheartening. Uh, defensive side, we got a sack from O'Hurst, Riddick, Abram, and Cleland Furl. No picks to speak of. Uh, Andy Dalton was very efficient with the ball. I mean, what did I just want to see the final stat line for AJ Green, man? He went off. Like, look, you can't underestimate and undervalue how much a star wide receiver brings. Like, we didn't have AB, we didn't have anyone that could put up a seven, seven catch, 114 yard touchdown performance. Uh, and they also had Justin Ross, uh, Trevor Lawrence's teammate from Clemson. He had 51 yards, but big performance for the Raiders on the road to move to three to one on the season. Now, hopefully, everything's going to be. Good until it's not with Antonio Brown, but we get him back for the next game. So coming out of that 3-1 and one from the episode makes me feel pretty good. Top of the AFC West. The other teams, Chiefs, Chargers, and Broncos are struggling. However, for the next episode, we welcome both the Chargers who... Have we beat the Char We beat the Chargers maybe once in the last three years. And uh, the Chiefs who were, you know, hit or miss on, but we already beat them this year on the road in Kansas City. So two huge games in the next episode in terms of the landscape of the AFC West we're sitting here three and one on the season we got contracts you know we, we don't want to pass over contracts but we know for a fact that we want Chris Warren here locked up long term he is the Mike Allstott to this offense so we make sure we got him locked up um, you know statistically speaking I guess we will get an update to where uh, Derek Carr and the and the uh, the Vikings are versus our own Vegas Raiders team. So the Vikings are sitting at three and one, same record. So when we look at Trevor Lawrence stats compared, so we got 19, not a whole lot of yards, but touchdowns look real good. 877 passing yards, nine touchdowns, no interceptions so far for Trevor Lawrence. And then when you look at the Minnesota Vikings, Derek Carr, 945, five touchdowns, two picks. So records are the same. Stats slightly in favor for uh, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, what he calls been going off though. Tyrell Williams averaging almost 74 yards a game for the Vikings. Their number one wide receiver. When you're the number one wide receiver, when you still got Thielen and Diggs, I mean, those guys, I'm going to assume with those numbers, maybe they've been banged up or hurt a little bit. Uh, it's still fairly impressive. So you can't underestimate the loss of Tyrell Williams to our squad, even though we did just sign John Ross off the street and he had a hell of a performance against the Bengals. So we'll be back here in just a couple days. I'm actually going to be pre-recording a couple of these because uh, the Hurricane Dorian looks like it's most likely going to destroy my house. So uh, last time a hurricane hit here, we didn't have power for like a week. So I'm going to try my best to pre-upload a lot so you guys don't miss any of the content. I'll try my best to stay safe. Thank you guys for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And fingers crossed, Antonio Brown is back week five. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit, well, you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. I send the game like, who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look